In the lead-up to the press say in March this Friday, the Prime Minister would like the public to consider the government's reasons for its position on Prasaini. In a recent interview conducted with the Honourable Prime Minister Henry Puna, questions were raised as to what the Prime Minister's thoughts were on the upcoming protest march against Persane fishing set to take place this Friday, 4.30pm. Well, you know, we have freedom of assembly, freedom of speech, we have all sorts of freedoms in our country, and I respect that. Uh, it's our people's right, you know, to, to do whatever they please provided they do so within the limits of the law. Uh, however, if I can say this, uh, that I've been a bit concerned with the one-sided promotion of one side of the story. Uh, there has been no attempt you know, to balance the story with what is and what people should be aware of. In an attempt to level out the playing field, the Honourable Prime Minister stated the scientific facts used to justify the Ministry of Marine Resources' action to pursue with persaining in the Cook Islands EEZ. For example, uh, you know, people are not aware that a large percentage of uh, total fisheries in the Pacific takes place in the Western Pacific. And the truth is, only recently, have the Cook Islands entered the picture because some of the tuna stocks, particularly sip jacks, have started migrating east as the scientists uh, predicted they would because of the warming of the waters in the west and so the fish are starting to move east now and uh, the other fact is that you know skipjack only has a, a short lifespan of three to four years after that they're gone, they die and they also multiply like rabbits. And our scientific evidence from the Foreign Fisheries Agency uh, suggests that uh, you know, we can actually license vessels to fish up to a certain limit within our waters without necessarily impacting on the stock, total stock in the region. The question I ask is, you know, given those uh, scientific information, what do we do? Do we, uh, you know, ban fishing altogether and deprive our country of much needed revenue from these resources that are not exclusive to us? Keep in mind, these things uh, wander all over the Pacific and they're in our EEZ for just a short while while they transit through. And, uh, you know, that is the reality of what we're dealing with. And my job as Prime Minister of this government is to ensure that you know, wherever we can within sustainable limits that we do have access, you know, to these resources. Because the other truth is, if we don't, other Pacific countries are taking them. And uh, really to talk about, uh, you know, conservation uh, on our own is pointless. Yes, you know, we're committed to that, but unless the other regions also agree with us, and actually uh, join us, you know, in restricting fisheries, and then, you know, we're just banging our heads against the wall. To counter the effects of commercial fishing within our waters, the establishment of Marae Moana has been an initiative government has been committed to for some time now, in order to preserve fisheries around each island. In fact, uh, we had two representatives, uh, Kevin Eero and my chief of staff, go to the uh, Kerry Summit in Washington late last year where they made an announcement to the world uh, that our government is committed to these exclusion zones where there will be no commercial fishing around each island. And I think you know, that's a more practical, positive step of preserving fisheries for our local people in the islands and here in Rarotong. Putting the blame on persaining as the culprit to the significant drop in fish being caught by local fishermen and reduced fish sizes now seen was not the right approach the public should take. As the Prime Minister reiterated, the people need to hear both sides of the story. It seems to be a very convenient excuse uh, you know, for, uh, for people uh, antagonising against persane fishing to say, oh, because of pinch, uh, per se, fishing, you know, there's less fish 
uh, available for the local fishermen. Uh, I don't really agree with that. I mean, if you look at our lagoon, either here at Utaki or even in the northern group, there's less fish. Uh, interestingly, my deputy mayor came on Malcolm's boat around the northern group islands to offload uh, the solar equipment for the solar project. And he said to me, you know, Prime Minister, I saw fish in Palmerston that reminded me of the past in Manihiki. Uh, you know, heaps of fish there. But the truth now is in Manihiki, there's very few uh, lagoon fish. Now, who are we going to blame for that? Per se, fishing? We haven't even examined and researched the impact of climate change on our fisheries resources. And we're taking the convenient excuse that has not been proven in any way, shape or form. And so, you know, that's just my word of warning to our people, that they really need to sit back and hear both sides of the story before they uh, commit to a cause of action. Rain or shine, the protest march against Persane fishing is to take place this Friday, the 24th of April, and will start from the Avaroa Harbour and end at the Avachu Harbour. Alana Smith, CITV News. We'll be right back after this commercial break.